Good morning, everyone. This is Jim Obermeyer. I'm your host today for SLMA Radio, and our subject today is what KPIs do, do sales managers need to track? And we've got some special guests today. We've got John Golden, who is the Chief Strategy Officer for Pipeline, Pipeliner, and we've got uh, Nicholas Kimla, who's also the CEO for Pipeliner. Now, uh, as a disclaimer, Pipeliner is a sponsor for the Sales Lead Management Association. We've had Nicholas and John on our programs in the past. We want to tackle this whole issue of KPIs for sales. It's an important subject, and sales managers need to know what do they need to track to be successful. Uh, John, before we get started, and Nicholas, can you give us a little rundown of Pipeliner, please? Um, John, why, 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 why we not change a little bit the roles and, and, and right now sure. you, you're, you take the lead. Okay, sure. Um, well, Pipeliner is a, is a CRM, uh, a customer relationship management system, but what really differentiates uh, Pipeliner, Jim, is that it's really built from a sales-centric point of view, and it's built so that salespeople get value out of it, sales managers get value out of it, and the way we do that is that we use visual elements to bring alive the information that's important for sales managers and salespeople to be able to do their jobs more effectively. So it's very different from traditional CRM, which is table-based or grid-based. We believe in visual because, you know, a, a picture speaks 60,000 times um, quicker than text will ever, and salespeople have, as you know, um, very short attention spans, so that's why we use visual elements to extract the important information that salespeople and sales leaders need in order to do their jobs effectively. And how uh, now, uh, Pipeliner is worldwide? Pipeliner is global, yeah, absolutely. We have customers in all four corners of the earth. Okay, and how old is the company? Um, we started in the U.S. Our, I, I moved from Austria, Vienna in the year 2012 in September, but our originally goes back, programming was our starting in the year 2007 at the end of 2007. Okay. And some, and some people were asking, my goodness, how long are, it took you to program? Our, and I think this is important that you guys understand why are there is not really a lot of competitors to Salesforce because it takes so long to have all these features. Our CRM uh, is very complex today. You need account mm -hmm. management, you need contact management, lead management, opportunity management, activity management. Uh, you need uh, report systems, insights in some form of KPIs, what we would talk later. All of that stuff is not working in two, three years. And this is why mostly it's only add-ons, and this is uh, the difference. Uh, we really uh, took a completely, as John beautifully laid out, uh, a completely different approach on, on, on CRM. And uh, this different approach is uh, focused on the sales manager, because in my opinion, the sales manager today is the hardest and our complicated job that's out there, and our, it's underserved, undertrained, and undervalued. And the sales manager needs help, but he needs the right help. So it's not coming like a firefighter immediately. Um, it, it, he needs help, and this is why we came out with this new version where we really give him some insights for doing his job better. Okay. So, and the insights, I can see how KPIs fit into this. Give us a good explanation of KPIs, either John or Nicholas. T tell all of our, tell our audience what KPIs are. Well, uh, KPIs are, you know, they're short for key performance indicators. And they are data points that you can use in order to analyze the performance of your organization, of individual salespeople, um, whatever you're looking at. And I think the... The really key part about uh, about KPIs is that sales tends to live in the moment, right? And sales management uh, will often just look at quota performance or look at revenue quickly to gauge the performance of their sales team. You know, either you're making quota or you're not, which is fine. Um, but there are other indicators about the actual, um, you know, whether you're uh, meeting quota. Are you losing a lot of deals? You know, do you actually have tons of deals, but you're losing a ton of them? You're still kind of making quota, but you're losing a lot. 
um, you know, historically over time, you're not creating enough opportunities for a, on a go-forward basis. So there's lots of other indicators that can come into play. And what we've done with Pipeline is really, really focus in on the five key ones that if you look at these and you take a historical trend analysis right there visually in front of you, you can see who's performing well, who's creating enough opportunities, who is closing a significant more uh, significant more opportunities and they're losing the value of those opportunities as opposed to the value of those that are lost. Um, these are the kind of indicators that can really make a difference to you analyzing how your teams are performing. Okay, well, uh, key performance indicators could be response time, rate of contact. Uh, I've done a little research today and everything. I look at everybody's got a different opinion mm -hmm. of what the key performance indicators are. Now, you've got hundreds and hundreds of clients, probably hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people using your software. So you tell us from your experience what these five key indicators are and why you put them into Sales Pipeliner in order to help these sales managers manage their business better. Yeah, but, but before we're just uh, minimizing it to the five KPIs that we have and, and how we are tracking them, it's important that we are focusing on one important thing is um, uh, sales in itself today cannot run without technology. It's not possible. Uh, I literally read almost every sales management book out in whatever comes out uh, on the market. Every. And interesting is that we all probably agree that technology is supportive, but it's much more than supportive today. And I, I, I explained that very shortly. Um, we all agree that our, at the end of the day, it's the sales manager, how he mentor and how he's coaching his team. But right. the, question, the question remains where he gets the data to coach the people, how he can look first of all, in the leading indicators, I call that, or mm -hmm. in the lagging indicators, how he gets knowledge, what, how his people are doing, as long as he has not insights to that, how he has not really analyzed the data in a good way and not in a sloppy way, yeah, in a real professional deep way, you cannot coach anyone. This is like uh, coaching a team uh, we know all right now we are in the season of Super Bowl coming up in, in February next year and we know football is all about coaching but guys all is about the data they have analyzed every data and they are really alive active sales is much more complex we have real leads opportunities how they're closing when they're closing when they lost whatever mm -hmm. when is the, the data coming in when it's going out what is the reason for losing and stuff like that you cannot run a pretty much good sales team without technology today. It's not possible. It's I agree. Impossible. The question remains, number one, is my data correct? Where is the data coming from? So the data has to be correct. This is why we took the visual approach. Why? We want helping the sales rep, they're putting the data in, that they like to do it. And we give them a tons of benefits, but we cannot talk today, yeah, because we're focused on the manager. But we give them tons of benefits that they are like to using the system. Very different approach. The second thing is we give the manager leading and lagging indicators so that they understand where you're coming from and where you're going. As long as you don't understand where you're coming from, how you should know in which direction you should heading, it would be uh, irresponsible, in my opinion. So the thing is, as long as you don't look back and understand what happens, why you lost, in which reason you lost, why the process is not correct, all of these KPIs even then make no sense. You can have some KPIs if you don't understand what happened in the past. You never can predict the future. I hope well, well, if the, we have to drive a little bit on that if we go deeper. If, if this is the heart of everything for the future, if we don't know where we are coming, how we can predict where we should go? Well, one of the issues I continue to see with the CRM systems is sales managers are really happy to get the systems. They try to get the salespeople trained on it. Uh, everybody's real happy when it comes aboard, and then sales managers don't use it themselves. They don't use it on a daily basis. They don't use the reports. They don't look at lagging. They don't looking at. They're not looking at leading. They are going blind. They're overconfident and under technology equipped, personally. So, 
I agree with you, certainly, Nicholas. It makes perfect sense to me, and through all of the clients you've had, I'm sure now we can get into, I want to find out the five perfect golden things I need to know. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. But be, be, uh, it, before you go there, though, Jim, there, that's an interesting point you make, and I completely agree with you that salespeople will take their leads, will take their lead um, from their sales manager. So if their sales manager is not using the system, they won't use the system. If their sales manager doesn't say that this particular, you know, that following the sales process is important, they won't follow the sales process, right? I mean, it won't happen organically. That's why it's incredibly important that the sales manager. Um, is uh, uses the system and understands why they need to use the system and that they understand at the end of the day that if they actually um, get, can get down and see um, each individual how they're performing against these KPIs and how the teams are that they can affect future performance and therefore their job becomes easier they become the heroes you know their teams are making quota they're selling lots but it all it all comes back to understanding why it's important to use the system and to use these KPIs. I, I give you another example. I know you want to try from the KPIs, and we will come there. You will get, I promise you. I promise you. You will get them. <laughs> but you see, at the end of the day, you have to be prepared for 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 everything to understand it in the whole holistic concept. Um, our, I give you a very uh, out of the box, and we know that right now from hundreds of customers and thousands of users. Um, okay, how you should know if the sales process is correct? How you should know? Can you only know when you look a little bit detached from the process and you look at the process in itself and you say where I'm losing and why I'm losing, and then probably maybe the stages, maybe there are too many. Or maybe one less. Maybe there is something you have to change on the probability of the stages. Yeah. Yeah? yeah. So you only understand it when you have a, a, a control instance. And we created that with the archive. We are the only solution in the world to offer an archive. And the archive is when you lose an opportunity, you have lost reasons, you can uh, individualize that, and then you put the data in the archive, and the archive is nothing else as the pipeline, um, a vice versa, uh, visualized as a process, and then you see immediately, my goodness, my guy is losing always in the fourth phase all his opportunities. Maybe I can help him. Maybe the process is incorrect. You see, I see what then, you mean. Yeah. then I, I mean. can then I can drive on the KPIs, and then I understand the KPIs. Otherwise, everybody's just guessing, especially yes. when you're a sales manager and you're sitting in a conference room with all the other managers, and they're saying, "Why aren't we making quota?" And then some of them, some somebody pops up. One of the brilliant guys, the engineers, pops up and says, "Well, I guess we need more sales training. Or we need more product training." And everybody runs off on the training thing. And the reality is, it's not training. It is something else that's going on, and nobody can figure it out. All right. Correct. So I've got a good feeling for that. I felt the pain before. Uh, John, give me my KPIs. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. You you worn us down. We're going to give you the KPIs. Well, uh, the first the first one is um, numbers of deals created, right? Because I mean that is a very key indicator of future success, right? And you should be able to look back and say, okay, um, based on deal size, et cetera, based on the type of sale sale we do, type of salespeople, how many deals, how many deals or opportunities should be created on a you know monthly basis in order to continue to meet quota going forward. Now so you mean oppor opportunities of any yeah. sort. Once they uh, hit the opportunity line. Yes. They become qualified. That's what we begin to track. Yeah, right? that's what that's the first thing to begin to track is the opportunities created. Um, then the next one is okay. So it's great to create those opportunities. How many of them are converted? And and on the flip side, uh, how many of those are lost? So that's uh, that's numbers two and three. That's the converted opportunities and the lost opportunities. So what's your what's your ratio of converted to lost? Are you are you you know converting out of every five? Are you converting three and losing two? Or are you converting one and losing four? You know what is it? They're they're the other ones. Then the value comes into play. So you may maybe you are converting four out of every five, right? 
right. the four, but the four that you're creating, uh, the converting are small deals, and every time you come up against a big deal, you're losing it. So in fact, the value of the deals you lose is greater than the value of the deals you win. So, um, so that's why it's important to have all of these um, KPIs because it's not just the numbers that you convert are important, but it's also the type and value that you convert are important as well. So it's it's opportunities created, it's number of opportunities converted, it's number of opportunities lost, and then it's the value of those opportunities won and the value of those opportunities you lose. If you take those five KPIs together, you can immediately get a very good snapshot of how well you're performing over time as a team, how individuals are performing, and what the future performance is likely to be, and where you may need to surgically intervene with coaching and mentoring in order to help um, increase that performance. Because like I said, if you look at one or two pieces of data, it can be misleading. Because like I said, you could say, well, this guy converts a lot of deals. He converts more deals than he loses. But then when you look at the values, you say, well, he converts the small deals, loses the big deals. And in fact, uh, you know, so at the end of the day, from a revenue point of view, it's not that great a performance. And or, then maybe you... I need to, or maybe I need to move him down to being focused just on small deals. Again, that's a great thing to know, isn't it? That maybe this guy is perfect for small deals, but is no good on big deals. You see, adding to, to all of that, are, are, I would say just to our underline what John is saying, are the importance is you can have hundreds of KPIs at the end of the day. But really to run something and to steer something and to focus and lead something, you, you don't need a lot. It's not so many are stuff that we really have to focus when it's getting critical. You see, when it's really critical in a situation, you focus only on a few very important things. And what is that for sales? It's about how many created deals or opportunities I'm doing. And how many of them are converting. And how many I'm losing and winning. And then what we did is we compared that to the team. Salespeople are competitive. And so what we do is we give them a ranking who was winning over period, over time, over week, over day, over whatever it is, and even over the territories, you can do that. And you can immediately see that, okay, this team is better, this territory and the other territory. When you visualize, when we visualize that stuff, immediately, yeah, it steers the competition. And what is when competition is between sales teams? Come on, you get better. This is like you get better products when you have more competitive product. You and get more, you get more closed deals too. Yeah. You close more deals. And what we did is because this is the sales manager only thing. But we put the same KPIs for the individual sales rep that he can see that to motivate himself because now he can look at the data and can say, "Wow, I'm not so good in this closing here. Okay, what shall I do? Okay, here came. This is the this is the only sadness that I have are from pipeline of sales. I are as a vendor, we are a product. We cannot go in and help the sales manager to be more a coach and mentor. We can't do that as vendors. And this is why we are reaching out to the sales our experts, to the sales coaches, and say, hey guys, if our tool you use correctly, you have tremendous impact. Tremendous impact. That would, for me, that would be highly frustrating to have a product that's as amazing as your product, to watch it be implemented into a company, but with nobody to follow up, just like you're saying, that would almost hurt <laughs> watching that happen. You, because you see the potentials, of, oh man, this company will rock it once they put this in place, and once the sales managers are using it, this is going to be great. And you check back six months later, three months later, a year later, and it's fallen off, and it's not the sales team, it's the manager didn't follow through. I agree. Our, and this is why we focus 100% right now on the manager because we feel the manager is the key to everything. The mm -hmm. frontline sales manager is the hardest job. It's the underserved job, undertrained job, and undervalued job. And we want to give him value. We think that if we help the frontline sales manager to get better, to understand how he can use that, he has to change. He has to change his mindset. Yeah. Whether you're producing a seminar series, user's conference, lunch and learn, or exhibiting at a trade show, Validar has a solution. 
From capturing leads at trade shows to managing on-site registration, tracking session attendance, gathering feedback, and providing sponsors lead retrieval, we have a full suite of solutions for you. Since 2005, Validar has been turning corporate events and trade shows into better business. Call 888-784-2929 or visit us at Validar.com. The Vanilla Group, Inc. is the only firm that delivers telebased lead generation programs exclusively for enterprise technology providers. They achieve results five times higher than industry standards for outbound lead generation based on the research published by implementing their unique Telesales 2.0 methodology. The Vanilla Group is an award-winning leader in this space, and they get results like no other firms. The Vanilla Group supports firms from Fortune 500 companies to startups. To learn more, visit buildpipeline.com or call 888-335-0340. That's 888-335-0340. Well, oh, I, can, I, I can certainly see that how I can use this as an interim sales manager and how I can change my attitude. But without this tool, it's going to be very hard because most CRM systems, Salesforce and, and others, just don't give you this capability. One, one of the, if not the most frustrating thing about sales is the peaks and valleys of revenue. And you know you will have a salesperson who suddenly like has smashes their monthly quota. It's fantastic, and then they go dry for two months, and then they come back, and and you're constantly like battling against these um, what we used to always call lumpy revenue, right? So you know one one month it's up, one month it's down, and and part of the reason why is because sales and sales managers are always so heavily focused at the end of the pipeline about closing deals for this month. Um, and so are salespeople, so they forget about preparing for the future. With these KPIs, you can look at it and go quickly, hang on, you're not creating enough deals right now, enough opportunities are not going into your pipeline right now, so you're going to have problems in a couple of months. So these are leading indicators where you can have an impact now, and you can see it instantly, so it's not a big undertaking on the behalf of the sales manager or indeed the salesperson, because as Nicholas said, we provide these KPIs for the individual salespeople to look at themselves and if I'm a smart salesperson I look at those and I address anything that needs to be addressed before my sales manager comes and beats up on me right and over time if you do this properly you should be able to smooth some of the lumpiness out of this uh, the, out of the peaks and valleys of revenue well I can uh, it, just the, the fact that the salespeople can look at what a great salesperson is doing in their organization mm -hmm and mm -hmm. look at what they're doing visually and figure it out because everybody wants to know, to know what is Jim doing that's a success uh, versus what I'm doing and uh, people should emulate the better people and not obviously follow the people that aren't doing well and that happens all too often. Now you've named three of the KPIs, what are the other ones? I got two more guys, I can't let you off the hook here. No sorry, it was, there was the five was the opportunities created, then the second one was the um, opportunities converted, the third one was the opportunities lost, the fourth is the value of the opportunities won, and the fifth is the value of the opportunities lost. This is our sample data, and we give you here the indicator you can choose between the sales unit and the sales people. Yeah? Uh, here we have the sales people. You can have here the five K, uh, KPIs, creation, conversion, lost one. Yeah? Uh, here you have the, 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 the KPIs, but now you can immediately dive into that and you can, in clicking, activating them, as you can see here. Yeah? Uh, and uh, when I'm activating them, I can see right now the KPIs. Um, and I have that for last month or for, for the month period. I can have that for each period or customizing it. And as you can see, at that case of sample data, Thomas was winning. Yeah? Now I can say I want these indicators to see immediately, or let's say the ones are of the team are, and let's go right now to a sales team, or we can go back to the individuals, yeah, or as we want. Uh, here we go. So we have here the users. Now I'm at the users, and now I can compare that again over the period of time. And as I said, um, as the sales rep individual. Uh, here you can activate your own data 
Yeah, always when you click on that our graph, and then you can see how you're personally doing, how far you are, what you're doing. So in in instant visualization in a very nice way with the real focus on the real important things. Focus on uh, on the one hand insight against the team, or or, or as we saw before indicators comparing the teams and this gives you insight and then you can drive on drive on in the pipeline and you go into the data and then you can see that it's really uh, yeah, our audience no, our, cool. our, our radio audience can't hear this can't see no, this, but but guys it's it's like analytics on steroids with pretty pictures and every, <laughs> everything you want to know about your company and your co-workers this is awesome Oh so my November, goodness! November fourth, this is available um, to everybody. With Pipeliner, you know, we believe in giving everything to our customers. So when this new version comes out tomorrow, all of our customers get these new features and this fantastic performance insights tool because we really do believe in helping the sales managers. Nicholas said it's the most undervalued, underserved, undertrained, but. Our firm belief is that the sales manager is an organization's greatest revenue multiplier because the impact that they can have and far outstrips anything else because if you've got an effective manager who's coaching, mentoring, who's understanding what's going on and they're tweaking and they're helping and they're changing, they're improving performance, the impact of that on revenue is huge because you're having multiplier effect always. Yes. Now, how does someone reach you? Uh, well, before you before you do that, how much does it cost? We've only got a minute and a half here. How much does it cost? What's the length of the contract? And how long does it take to get set up? And then tell us how someone can reach you. Okay, good. All right. The price is four hundred and twenty dollars per user per seat per year. Uh, we have yearly contracts. Uh, the setup is our very fast. Our big companies. We have really big companies. Our token it, it was not taking them longer than our one to two weeks for all, all setup uh, we have really revolutionized that our um, even the customization of data import and stuff like that and you can reach us over the website our www.pipelinercrm.com you've really given us a great program today mm -hmm. John Golden the chief strategy officer uh, Nicholas Kimla the CEO we've been talking about the five KPIs that every sales manager should know and have and use and uh, we really got into the software which is deeper than we do in a lot of our interviews but it was really necessary Fun. to understand these KPIs. <laughs> What's that laugh for? It was fun. I love watching how passionate they both got when they were talking about what people need to know and where the pain spots are and how they've solved it. I'm very excited. Well, and and who, who knew CRM could be fun? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great work today, folks. Uh, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, this will be available both up on YouTube as well as a copy will be up available on Pipeliner in a week. Thank you very much.